Hi there Chevy owners. Today in your 2022 Chevrolet Colorado, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Weston's full length running boards. And you can see that it is a full length board that goes all the way from the front of the door there, all the way here to the back, even stick it off far enough that if you needed to, you could use the rear here as a step to help you get into the back of the truck bed. And in addition to being extra long, this is also an extra wide step. A lot of your Nerf bars and stuff, they're only like four inch round. You've got five and a half inches of surface area here to step onto. And I got a pretty big foot. I wear a size 13 shoe and that's about half my foot. I can get the whole ball of my of my foot on there, getting plenty of contact. That's really nice for not just getting in and out of the vehicle, but let's say I have a ladder rack or something like that on my truck and I need to put gear on top. It's a whole lot easier to get a little step up with secure footing to be able to load those items with running boards like this. You can see here that the black molded polymer of the step matches the same kind of texture and color of the trim pieces that you see on your vehicle. So it just kind of integrates right in. It looks like it was something that came with the truck when you bought it. The textured surface helps increase your grip on your foot when you're getting on it. And there's additional raised areas here for inclement weather, whether it's snow, mud, or just rain. Uh, those wet, slippery particles can get smushed and pushed down in between the grooves so the raised areas can contact your shoe, giving you secure footing when you're trying to get in and out of the vehicle. It has a, an aluminum base that runs across the bottom here. So aluminum is going to be lighter than, uh, than your steels and other metals. And then the molded polymer that covers everything up is going to give you that textured surface. And the polymer you can see is made of a flexible material. So if any kind of road debris were to come up and fly and hit here, uh, it would be able to just kind of flex out of the way, hit the metal surfaces and bounce off. And also while we're down here, we can take a look at the brackets that secure it. It's nice and thick in the directions that matter. You can see how, how thick that is and your force is going to be a downward force. So it's real difficult to flex our bracketry here because of that. They are custom designed for this particular vehicle. So they'll line up with matching holes that are already pre-existing in the vehicle. So there's no drilling required. It comes with all of the hardware that we need as well to get everything attached. You will want to make sure you use our fit guide here at eTrailer when purchasing these. So that way you make sure you get the appropriate one for your particular truck because uh, whether you've got short bed, long bed, things like that can change um, which bracket kit and running board is going to be the best one for your particular truck. Now when we do compare these to some of the other running boards available here at eTrailer, such as the ones that are all metal or like the Nerf bars, this one is a little bit more flexible than, uh, than the the all metal ones, they do feel a little bit sturdier when you're getting on them, in and out of them. Um, so if that's really important to you, then I would probably look there. Um, the little bit of flex that it has could potentially kind of throw you off when you're getting in and out. If you're trying to, if you're carrying a lot of stuff, maybe loading things on top, you gotta get used to the fact that it is gonna move just a little bit on you, especially towards the outside edge here, just cause uh, of where the support is underneath. But I do think this is gonna be a more appropriate running board for you out people out there that have children because um, with the round nerf bars and stuff there's going to be a gap between the opening here and where the top of like the nerf bar is going to be and if your kid happens to just miss the step it's possible that his foot could get through there um, potentially injure themselves so this has got a nice covering here that prevents anything from getting down in that gap but i like that it does have a tiny space here so that way there's no no chance of it like holding in dirt and moisture which can cause rust and corrosion there's enough gap that it should allow all that stuff to kind of flow down and not stick in place causing any corrosion but it's a small enough gap that uh, any children and stuff like that that are trying to get on here will you know, hit their toe on here and not slip off and fall in between and get stuck in any weird situations. You're out on a trip or something like that and that happens and now your kid's crying and you don't even, just avoid that altogether with something like this. This is a little bit more appropriate for them. And that full length means that they got plenty of space here and that five and a half inch width, you know, how kids are like to run around and stuff, they can jump on and off of here. It's real appropriate for them. Now that we've showed you some of the features of our running boards, why don't you follow along with me in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. We're going to take it step by step, a little bit more detailed than what you're going to get in the instructions that come included with it. We're going to begin our installation here on the driver's side of our vehicle. First thing I recommend you do is just go ahead and get your hardware out and lay it out in the location where you're roughly going to need it. That way it just helps simplify the process once you crawl into there to start installing things. So first is your brackets. You're going to have six brackets. There'll be three of one type and three of another. 
They do have numbers on them. One ends in a six and another one ends in a seven. So that's how you can tell them apart by numbers, but you can also tell them apart by looking at them. You want two brackets for the front and the middle that are gonna be angled towards the rear. So you can see the flat part here and then the angles go towards the rear. So both of the brackets that are gonna to be towards the front of the vehicle are gonna be angled like that. So I've got one side out there, one side out like that. For your rear bracket, we want it to just angle the opposite direction. So it'll sit like this and you can see they angle towards the front. It's gonna sit like this underneath the vehicle. So this is gonna be what's sticking out. So I recommend just setting those on the ground, kind of where you're gonna be. And then you can get out your hardware. You're gonna need basically two of everything. So you have two hex bolts, two square head bolts, two clips, two washers. And there are two different size washers. These thinner washers are for those. They also have two lock washers and two nuts. The nuts will go with these two. It's actually four lock washers, I guess, because you have two for the those bolts and two for those bolts. So now that you got your hardware set out, we can crawl underneath and start getting all this hardware installed. Our rear tire is just there to the left of us. The rear door is right here. This is kind of where the truck bed seam would be. So we're gonna start with our rear bracket back here. So if you kind of go underneath all the way back, you'll see these two sets of holes and these two rubber caps. These are the furthest rear caps, the one underneath and also one on the inside edge. Remove both of these. We're just gonna use a flat bladed screwdriver just to pop those out of there. After those are popped out, we can take our clips here. These clips are gonna slide from the larger hole towards the smaller hole. And then when you just get it to line up, if you get it to line up, it kind of is slightly loose. See how it's kind of loose now that it popped all the way in there. That's how you know you got it properly lined up. You want this kind of raised portion to be up inside the frame. There we go, just like that. Take your bracket and your hex head bolt. You'll place a lock washer on the bolt first, followed by a flat washer. That's gonna go through the hole in your bracket, lining up with the clips that we just inserted, and it threads right into that clip. This is the one on bottom. The one there on the inside edge is gonna use the exact same hardware. And we are using the slightly thicker washers with with these uh with the hex head bolts here the thinner washers we'll use for these square square head bolts and this one's going to line up here i have to position your bracket just a little bit to get it to line up and we just want them to be roughly hand tight I and mean, you don't even need to tighten them all the way down um, looseness is actually going to be useful for us uh, to get everything to kind of line up and work out smoothly so now that we've got this bracket here loosely installed, we're gonna move down the frame to the next point and repeat that process. Let me show you where the grommets are that you'll wanna remove because there are some extra grommets that we're gonna be skipping. So as we move forward from the bracket that we just installed at the back, you're gonna have another grommet here on the bottom. Skip that grommet. And then the next grommet after that is the one that we're gonna remove. So go ahead and pop that one out of there. There's also one on the inside edge. That one will pop out as well. And then just to show you the next grommet, just continue on down to the very front grommet. We're also gonna utilize this one. So go ahead and pop both of those caps out of there. And it's gonna be the exact same hardware and stuff to get it installed here. The only difference is that our brackets are angled towards the rear for these two brackets. We'll now take our running board. And I just sat it here underneath. This is the orientation it's gonna eventually sit in on top of here. We're gonna take it and flip it over like that. And that's gonna reveal the slats underneath. Our square head fasteners are gonna fit down inside these slats. And there are three different slats that they will fit in. They'll fit in, well, I guess technically it'll fit in this one, but you see it's too loose. We want it to fit in a slat where you can't pull it out of there. They're gonna have a slat here, here, and here. We do not wanna use the middle one. We wanna use this guy here, skip the middle, and then go to this one. And then all I'm doing, the reason why I set the running board underneath the truck like this, because I'm just pushing the bolts down until they roughly line up with my bracket. And we're gonna do the same thing with the remaining two. You do have to go all the way in from the end. So like this bracket here, you're gonna have to start on one end and push it all the way down until it lines up. And they're still gonna be loose. They're gonna move on you when we go to lift this up. But the closer they are, the easier time you're gonna have lining it up when you're trying to lift it in place.
All right, so we've got them all roughly where we want them. We're just gonna flip it back over. We're gonna lift it up and line it up with our brackets. And it can be a little tricky. Getting everything to line up. There we go. Sometimes you gotta kind of lift up a little bit and slightly maneuver your bolts. Go down here to the very end. We'll get these ones to line up. All right, at that point, all of our, oh, no, we still got one missing here, this one. All right, now we have all of our fasteners through our brackets. We can now put our hardware on. This is the thinner washer that comes in our kit. You're gonna go with a lock washer, I'm sorry, a flat washer, followed by a lock washer, and then the nut that comes in your kit will thread right on the end. Just like that, and we just want it about hand tight for now as well, because we're gonna need to slide it back and forth on our brackets here to get it lined up in the position that we want it in. So we're just gonna repeat this now for all the remaining fasteners that we just dropped down through our brackets. So now that you got everything loosely installed, you just wanna position it however you want, want it to be oriented on your vehicle. For our customer, we're gonna position the front edge here, right at the front edge of this plastic trim piece. That way it puts a little bit more of the running board off towards the back uh, so that way we've got a little bit hanging off the back. If they wanted to use this as a step to get into the truck bed, uh, they would have that option to be able to do so since this running board is so long. But you can move it forward or backward from there. You can put it however you want. Um, I just typically recommend you try to make a match on each side so they look nice. So we're going to use this as our visual cue so we can make it match. I just kind of lined it up to there. You might have to tap your brackets underneath a little bit to make, them, make it slide. But once you've got it roughly in the position you want, we're gonna go ahead and start tightening things down. We're gonna start with the bolts that attach the brackets to the vehicle first. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to snug these down. And these don't tighten very tight. This tool doesn't put out a whole lot of torque, uh, so that's why we're using it. But if you have an electric tool you're planning on using for these, um, if it's got any kind of power behind it, you might want to consider doing it by hand because the, the torque specs on these are going to be fairly low. So, okay, we've got all of our brackets tightened down to the vehicle. I'm going to just double check myself and make sure that I haven't moved out of my orientation from how I've slid the running board, make sure it's still lined up the way I want. And if everything looks good there, then we're going to go back and tighten down those lower bolts. All right, after we double checked everything, we made a little adjustment, everything looks good. We're just going to snug these down now. So now that you've got everything snug now, we can just go back with our torque wrench now and torque all the fasteners to the specifications outlined in the instructions. And now that we've got all of our hardware torqued down, we're gonna perform the exact same procedures over on the other side to get that one installed. And that completes our look at Weston's full-length running boards on our 2022 Chevrolet Colorado.